Hey everybody, welcome to the channel. And here it is. This is going to be the ultimate Fatalis guide. We're going to talk about everything you ever want to know about this fight. You will never need to watch another video about Fatalis again. Everything is going to be time stamped. So here we go. I'm going to actually start this video off with just uh, a brief rundown of the stage, where everything is and uh, what they're going to be used for and how they're going to be used is going to come a little later. Uh, I just wanted to get that intro sequence right there. And let's put on our ghillie mantle and let's just find out everything we need to know about this stage, okay? I'm going down. Please don't look up my skirt. Breaking its head should be effective in weakening its powerful breath attack. Yes, it is. Very effective. In fact, you have to break the head or you cannot survive phase three. It's just, Im well, it's not impossible, but you won't. All right, so you're going to land here. Right here is going to be the ballista. This is kind of like the corner of the stage. That's where Fatal starts. Over here is some rocks right here. Um, this is going to be your first shelter for the first time he burns. And over here is going to be the area that you're going to need to climb up to get under that into the gate for the end of phase two, beginning phase three, you just can't have access to it until he burns it down the first time. Up there on the left is a ballista shot that you're gonna use the binder arrows and there are binder arrows already back there. You just don't have access to them in phase one, but it's gonna be right next to the binder, uh, the actual ballista. And there's a binder shot that gets melted from behind these rocks as well. And we'll, we'll talk about that again. Here's your rail. The rail gun is going to be over here as well. Uh, that's going to start in phase two as well. Okay. Back over here to the beginning of the stage, you have a ballista over here and you have some ammo over there. You're not going to use the ballista for too much. We'll go over what you will. And here are your cannons that you can set up if you want to start off with that cannon run. And I guess let's discuss oh the albatross in the mansion here um this isn't really the most effective way to fight fatalis you don't want to start off with these cannons unless you're in a group preferably four uh especially if you're going to have somebody that's dedicated to take out um just as many cannon shots as they can once you completely empty this thing right here if there's any cannons in there it won't respawn but once you completely empty these they will respawn and you can have somebody in phase one that just kind of uh, goes through these cannons and repeatedly shoots them out, but they're gonna have to change for phase two because his first giant breath attack is gonna destroy this whole area along with that back wall over there giving you access to the rest of the stage. So this is just a brief layout so you understand where everything is. Again, the ballistas are over here. The rail is over here. This rail is gonna go back into that area once it blows out and that's where you're gonna get everything done. And that's where you hide out from the first time, and I am out of here. Alright, let's go to the next part of the video. Things that you need to understand about this fight. Alright, let's talk about this armor. <laughs> this is this is the point of the fight, so we can acquire this stuff. Uh, why is it so great? Just look at it. Look at these jewel slots. Every single piece has three level four jewel slots. That's amazing. Uh, and you'll use it all the time. Uh, there's no point to use pretty much anything else. Uh, there are some for some specific types of builds, but you'll pretty much get this and never need anything else. Uh, I do recommend the waist piece for long swords. Uh, I keep forgetting that there's going to be multitude of other um, weapon users watching this video um, so I'm trying to keep things specific to skills rather than techniques you know what I mean um, but I'm assuming that the waste is going to be the best alpha for everybody for the critical eye and the weakness exploit um, but you just get more bang for your buck if you you know I look at this and I consider this four level four slots and two critical eye which let's just say is a level four slot as well so you get four level four quality slots Lots out of it you know uh, and then this one you get uh, one four slot right you get two critical eyes which is another four slot let's just say the third critical eye and weakness exploit is an, a fourth or a third level four slot so now you got three and then you get two additional level three slots so to me that just outweighs 
uh, this piece just ever so slightly uh, for me to wear it instead. Now you can uh, pick up some extra handicraft like with this. This is basically if you wanted to use a handicraft two jewel in one of these slots, boom, now you have this piece, you know. Uh, if you wanted to uh, open you know add three handicraft here you basically take away a level four and reduce one down to a level one so uh, if you have all the jewels you need this is the beta is going to be the best except for the waste piece if you don't then you can consider this but you know look at the uh, resources you're going to need for each piece the cortexes the shards the fell wings large uh, elder dragon gem this is a piece that does not require the eye so you can farm this without beating him you can farm this by doing some techniques that we'll talk about in phase one and phase two uh, and you're not farming him to beat him you're just farming him to get this stuff you know the large elder dragon gem you don't get from fatalis you get from um, you know some other source but um, now the waste does not require an eye either in either piece yeah so if you want this piece you need an immortal reactor what does that come from uh Rajang, i think well anyways you guys can look that up but it, cortex fell wings pectus that's chest wings and something i can't remember um and these can be uh, the cannon opening is perfect for farming these pieces that don't require the fatalis eyes so those cannons do damage all over the body so you start softening everything up uh, make sure you soften like the chest and the head or and whatever you can really uh maybe the i don't think you can get on his wings uh so the chest and the head uh and then that will get you um um, soften so when you do the wall bangs you're doing extra parts damage to those parts okay uh, the greaves you got um, no fatalis eye, uh, eye as well okay so a head horn so you will need to get one break I believe to get the head horn um, but that should be doable uh, with the cannon opening as well Rajang heart there uh, fatalis shards yeah so no eyes in this uh, this one does require the eye the chest piece so you need one for the chest piece and you need one for the helmet uh, everything else is not required from fate well yeah the other two fatalis parts but azure dragon's fire and the stygians and ogre part uh so you're going to basically need four eyes because uh the zagaspan is going to require one for each phase of it too uh so let's just go ahead and check that out forge weapon where's the weapon oh there it is too. So your Fatalis Sickle, you need one evil eye, and then whenever you want to upgrade this, oh, well, I don't want to make it, but when you're going to upgrade it to the Zagaspan, and <clears throat> you're going to need another eye and, and some more head horns and pectus. So basically, that's my point in this portion of the video. <clears throat> excuse me you can get several of his pieces uh three of his pieces to be exact uh without having to kill him and you can just use the cannon openers and other tools uh, this is you're gonna i'll explain later the binders when you're just farming you're gonna use those in phase two whereas when you're trying to kill him you're gonna use those in phase three um so that kind of stuff basically uh is there any other thing i wanted to mention about this arm oh yes 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 there is uh the skills that come with the armor so the skills that come with the armor when you're having two pieces uh this removes the skill level cap for the skill secrets all this means is all your things like your divine blessing that used to be uh, max three in base game and is max five with the right set is unlocked but not just that everything that has that ability agitator uh, you know heroic slugger whatever can be now expanded into level five or level seven in iceborne any of that can be done with the Fatalis set. It doesn't have to be Teoster's technique. Doesn't have to have three pieces of that. You just need two pieces. Uh, no, is that uh, that might not be a good example? But any of the skills, the actual skills that you jewel slot in that gets expanded, that's the stuff. When you have four pieces, you get um, True Razor Sharp slash Spare Shot for you. Uh, projectile users uh and you get health and stamina and 100 at the start of every quest or after fainting 
So what this basically means is you start off with, once you're wearing four pieces of this armor, with 200 health and 200 stamina. That's the max you can get in this game. So uh, the food that you eat no longer affects your stamina. And as long as you're still wearing a Fatalis set after you cart and, and come back in, you never have to worry about your health. You're always at 200, basically. Okay. And the True Razor Sharp basically triples your sharpness. So if you have, let's say, uh, 20 units of sharpness, now you have 60. Um, so I believe each level of Handicraft does 20. So I have 40 units of sharpness on Handicraft. Uh, that's 120 units of sharpness. Uh, and I think there might be some on the Zagaspan. And because it is a purple weapon, I'm not 100% sure. But anyways, that's the reason you want this armor. But just know, for most people's journey of beating Fatalis, you're going to have to acquire these three three pieces or sorry the gree uh, the boots the waist and the, uh, the claws uh, and then start building some sets uh, because you just need a lot of skills like I showed you the breakdown of my set which is a Zagas or Fatalis set you're going to need a lot of skills to beat this guy uh, you might even need a full set so you might have to go ahead and farm for these three and then specifically just farm for the eye to get these uh, or to get the weapon I would rec recommend getting a full set of armor or at least four pieces and the Frostfang helm or uh, four pieces and the cold boots um, so you can do that build and then get the Zaga spin and afterwards because you can do comparable damage enough to get more evil eyes but having the full set and being able to slot everything is going to be the most useful thing okay um and this is it. This is the ultimate armor set you can get in this game. Uh, one last point, actually, I want to make about this is you guys have to understand what this monster is. Fatalis is considered by just about all pro uh, or just, you know, vets of Monster Hunter as the hardest monster to fight in Monster Hunter. Many consider Monster Hunter World the greatest Monster Hunter game, period. Uh, many consider it the most challenging. Some can argue, and you have valid arguments. I completely understand, but some make that argument. Uh, but Fatalis is meant to be that king of all kings. He is not supposed to be an easy fight. I know he's master rank 24, but he is supposed to be difficult. He is supposed to be the challenge of your lifetime. And honestly, Soloing him might be the hardest thing to do in gaming, or at least has been in almost two decades, really. Uh, not since things were Nintendo and Super Nintendo hard have things been this difficult in a fight for me. Uh, but as you learn and as you get used to his move sets and stuff like that, he got easier, and now I can meet him more times than not, really, well over 50%. But understand that. Understand what you're walking into in this fight. You might have to farm him for 20 hours before you get all the pieces or just get his move set comfortable enough to be able to counter enough things to be able to beat him uh, and just understand that you're attempting something special you're not attempting something that any monster hunter player can do you're attempting to be like among the top tier monster hunters a master master hunter that's what you're trying to do and I'm trying to help you get there because once you do it's one of the most rewarding feelings a video game will ever give you. Thank you. That's all I wanted to say about that. Just want to add, uh, I made a mistake. You're actually going to need five Fatalis Evil Eye. Uh, there's actually two you need for the uh, chest piece, uh, either one, the alpha or the beta. Um, then you're going to need one for the helmet, and then two for the sword, one for the base level, one for the upgrade to Zagaspanon. So that's going to be five that you need. Uh, and I also just wanted to point out that this fight uh, does require you to bring everything to the table that you've ever learned in Monster Hunter, and plus other things. Uh, you're going to know need to know about the game mechanics. You're going to need to know... Um, you know, just how to be really uh, efficiently an offensive juggernaut with your weapon. You have to be good. You have to know how to get damage. You have to be evasive. You have to know how to play your weapon defensively either. Um, I don't want to be too specific about it because I don't know, like, uh, projectile bows or gun lances or anything like that type play style, so I don't want to give any wrong information. But you're just going to have to know how to play your, your weapon offensively for the damage you're going to need and defensively for the number of uh, moves 
moves he can do that can just one shot you uh, or um, pin you down so you can be two shotted easily essentially one shotted anyways so you're you're gonna have to be good at this game you're gonna have to get a little bit better for this fight because he's gonna bring forth moves and techniques that uh, your old skill level is not gonna be up to par with you're gonna need to get it even sharper uh, that's what this fight is it's what this fight is meant to be and understand that and feel good when you do beat him and don't feel too bad when you don't because all of us go through this phase when we first start learning to fight him where there's death after death after cart after cart um just like i was mentioning before i just wanted to come up with uh, a build that would be good for generally everybody to fight him instead of my own specific build and just by tweaking a few skills that i don't uh, i normally rely on that i didn't have uh it was a completely different fight for me and it was almost like going back to day one well not quite but it, it, you know what I mean. Anyways, uh, let's go on to the next subject. I just wanted to add that in so you guys had the right information. All right, let's go over the builds. Um, let's start off with this one. This is the build for the bomb setup. Um, let's go ahead and show the jewels as well. All right, you're going to have... <laughs> Most of this doesn't matter. Well, I mean, I guess this all does matter. Okay, let's start from the beginning. You're going to have your Fatal Zagaspanon. You're going to have your normal Affinity Increase Health Regen Elemental Status Effect up on those. Uh, I got the Frostfang Helm on just because uh, it's slightly more damage. This is all about, for me, this is all about damage and hurting that head to get as much destruction of that part as possible in the beginning of the fight. So I got my attack boost max, my critical eye max, my dragon max. I don't have agitator at all uh, because you come down and you knock him down before he gets enraged. So ag agitator won't proc. So it's useless for just this part. Because remember, all we're doing is going down there, setting up the ca cannons, getting a knockdown, and then you're going to either proc poison um, and do a wall bang or get some head damage. And I prefer to do the head damage. Uh, tool specialist max so my mantle start charging um, the instant I take them off or the other one starts charging um, so when I come back up to camp I can swap out and already have some charge in my other mantles ready to go uh, primarily my glider uh, the evade window it's just there because I couldn't decide on anything better to put on there uh, critical boost max weakness exploit max part breaker max peak performance max all of that will be in effect because you know it's you're not going to take a lick of damage uh, evade extender that's mainly just so I can roll and do the cannon thing a little faster I don't know if bombardier affects this but I had a bombardier attack jewel to round out my attack boost so I just stuck it on there clutch claw, claw of course heavy artillery is going to be in my uh, glider and uh, jump invasion just to have a little bit more invasion uh, for when I want to far cast out just so if, in case it's a close call I can get away uh, hardly ever is uh, max out my jumping with the ghillie mantle but the ghillie is uh, negligible it's just there so you can load the cannons undetected and then I need something to be able to have heavy artillery and I did not want to put my temporal because I have it on my other swap out set so that way my temporal is not affected and I can immediately use it when I swap out uh, I just have to drop a smoke bomb uh, you know at the cannon so you can go ahead and shoot off the cannon without being detected uh, these are the jewels jumping attack flawless evasion flawless evasion shaver destroyer flawless maintenance destroyer maintenance destroyer maintenance critical maintenance critical maintenance expert four bomber attack dragon uh critical and jump attack and your two attacks uh, of course these are going to be interchangeable uh, you might not have some of these in the quite that order but basically i'm just trying to get as much damage as humanly possible on the head after it's been softened uh, that's why shaver is important because i just want to immediately get it softened and get as much damage as possible and really that's about it for this build uh, the other build is going to be the build i use to swap out in or i'm just going to use if i'm not gonna do the bomber uh, start and i generally don't do the bomber start uh, I'm sh I don't know where this segment is going to be in the video, so I don't know if I've explained that or not, but I will at some point if I haven't already. Uh, okay, so Fatalis, let's see. All right, same thing with the uh, Zagaspanon Affinity Health Regen Elemental Status Effect Up. 
Uh, and here are the uh, the goods here. Uh, Critical Eye, Max, Agitator Max, Divine Blessing Max, Attack Boost 4, uh, Evade Window 4, Stun Resistance 3, Fire Resistance 3, Critical Boost 3, Weakness Exploit Max, Peak Performance Max, 2 Handicraft, that's all I really need. Uh, I got 2 Evade Extender in my base, and then my Mantles... Uh, temporal mantle is going to have my two heavy arts, uh, so I can take care of the uh, guns or whatever I want to use them for. The ballista, it's helpful as well. Uh, cannons, of course, uh, but I don't use this setup as I just explained for that. Glider mantle, I got uh, my attack four in there to get my max attack, and a jump and get attack to round out my uh, evade extender. Evade extender is super important in this fight. This fight. Um, unlike any other build or any other fight I've ever talked about, is very, very important to have the right defensive setup. And uh, you want Divine Blessing maxed out. It's going to save your butt so many different times. Uh, but you also want to have Evasion up to three or higher. I can put four on here. And um, your Jump Extender. You'll see in my fights... Uh, especially when you get caught in a flame or big breath attack, uh, having the increased iframes and the distance in your rolls is going to get you from either being hit in the first place or if you get stuck in a f fire blast to be able to roll your way out of it uh, much faster than running through it because if you're rolling you have all these extended iframes from your evasion ability uh, and the roll is giving you much more distance because of your jumping ability and it just makes it so you can survive those things and uh, a lot of if you were just running you would have carded um, even if you had healing yourself because there's a certain point in that attack that the flame is going to overwhelm you and this is going to save your butt so with that with your uh, divine blessing this is how you survive fatalis long enough to do damage but now you got to have your, your meta stuff in there because this is a dps monster not ultimate dps but you have to be concerned about how much damage you're doing through them throughout the fight so, uh, got your attack jewel fours, uh, challenger jewel four, evasion four, expert four, jumping expert, jumping uh, evasion, uh, critical protection, flawless protection, flawless protection, flawless protection. I don't know why I said that three times, but I like things that come in three. Uh, handicraft protection, handicraft, shaver, hard fire resistance. This is your other defense. So, you're stacked on defense. Here's your fortitude jewel. Must have, must have, must have. When you get to the point where you can fight them and, um, and not cart or cart once, yeah, you can get rid of that. But the damage boost it gives you is incredible, but the defensive boost is also incredible. So if you cart twice with Fortitude, with Max Divine Blessing, with Evasion Window 4, and with Jump Extenders, your rolls are godly, and they will save you so many times from doing so many wonderful things defensively by eating damage and by just negating um, attacks with inv invincibility windows. So it, it, this is the setup you guys want to use for Fatalis. This is how you bait the cones and avoid the fireballs. Uh, this is how you cover your butt in so many different situations. So uh, you'll see it in action, but um, this is what we're doing. We're going to do heavy defense with as much offense as we possibly can. And I hope that all made sense. And uh, we'll go on to the next segment of the video. A couple of things I forgot to mention. Uh, I forgot to mention the exact uh, armor pieces and charms. Uh, so for the first phase, uh, the bomber build. Uh, you're going to have the Frostfang Helm, like I mentioned. Everything else is going to be Fatalis. The Waste is going to be Alpha. You're going to have the Wim's Worms Bane, Bane Charm. Uh, I can't speak today. Uh, I don't know. I stutter a lot, and sometimes I mispronounce words, but I don't really care. It's just what I do. Uh, Worms Bane Charm. Oh, there you go. That gives you, um, what? five dragon attacks so uh that's how you get the max dragon in this build since you're not using very many gems except for that single one and your glider and ghillie uh for the fatalis uh main set uh it's actually going to be the fatalis helm because you're going to get your stun resistance that way and i use the cold taroth um boots um let me just show this real quick Uh, for the jewel slots, and it has two critical boosts, and it's uh, four base defense versus fire. So what that allows me to have is with my uh, hard resist fire jewel, I now have a base fire 
20 damage reduction or uh, uh, level so uh, and that negates all the fire blights I don't need to eat any fire resistance to make sure I can avoid that blight and I can eat for attack boost large uh, eating for attack boost large is going to be uh, the most important attack buff you can give yourself in any situation it's a plus uh, what is 50 I, I can't remember 50 15 I, something like that but it's it's more than you're getting from the three attack boosts you're you're uh, dropping so you always want to set your base equipment for any hard monster so you can eat for attack boost large and get your defense from your build uh, I also want to point out that this build is for casuals and us average guys or a slightly above average we're not speed runners we're not so perfect and we know fatalis is everything and can do just amazing things constantly uh, i wanted to build a build and i went through several builds before i settled on this one uh, i put a lot of effort into this video guys uh, i put uh, i went through a lot of fatalis runs uh fighting in and doing things i don't normally do just to be able to show them and then sometimes i had to learn how to counteract his strategy to be able to show the thing I was trying to show, like uh, maybe how to use a, a ballista or something like that, you know. Um, so I went through a lot of uh, of runs, um, you know, many completions, many just, uh, you know, in the beginning of the video is just going down there to show you what there is and swooping out of there. But just a lot of different runs of Fatalis to put this all together. And I went through a lot of different builds, attack heavy builds, even more defensive builds than this. And this is the one I kind of settled on that's going to give you all your essential survival ability skills, not just essential ones, but uh, the most comfy to be able to still get as much damage offensively and for, to eat for uh, attack boost large. And speaking of eating, that's going to be our next point. So let's get on with that as well. And just like your build and just like your items, your food is going to be very important in this fight and could determine whether you win or lose or how easy or difficult this battle is going to be. Um, I'll go over my preferred food in just a moment and just give you some other viable options. Feline Safeguard. Is it Feline? Yeah, it's Feline. Feline Safeguard um, just negates a faint. So if you faint, uh, you know, no perks or anything like that. It just doesn't count as one of your faints for your quest requirements. And this does stack uh, with other safeguards. So if, like, your whole team has safeguard... Uh, oh, but if your whole team has it, it works once individually for them, but like somebody else's safeguard won't work for you if you faint. But it does work that way with Feline Insurance, but I'll make that come back to that point in just a second. So this is always a handy one to have. Uh, another good one to have is... Uh, no, I guess just my preferred. Uh, Feline Moxie. I like Feline Moxie. Um, one way you can do it is with the elemental resist large bonus to give you some more fire negation, and that helps with longsword users. Uh, but I'm not 100% sure what build everybody's going to be using and what weapon classes, so I prefer just to go and eat the one for the attack bonus. And uh, this is almost the perfect setup for me. Feline Insurance. If you see Feline Insurance, Feline, if you see Feline Insurance, always eat for that. Uh, if you can, uh, if it's with Moxie for sure if it's with moxie attack large yes no, don't even question it moxie basically allows you to basically faint one extra time uh, if your health falls down to zero it won't count as a cart you'll get back up uh, kind of like the effect when you have your health uh, booster on your palico and it prevents that one faint it's very similar you just get right back up and you have a chance to heal so it's almost like getting one free faint and then if you have feline insurance um Phalon Insurance works like Safeguard as well, whereas if you cart, it doesn't count as one of your feints for your mission. And uh, that does transfer. So, for example, if I have Phalon Insurance and I don't cart, but my buddy does, his cart will not count. And if the whole team has it, it will work for everyone. So you get, you know, four, F, you know, four potential feline insurances means four extra carts you can have in that mission uh, and that can also stack with feline safeguard feline safeguard so uh, you can do some funky things with these combinations depending on what's available uh, but my perfect perfect meal if it ever shows up is feline moxie 
Feline Insurance and Feline Foodie. The Foodie allows me to keep all my perks after I cart. So if I do cart, I'm going to prop fortify. Yay! Uh, and then I'm going to be able to keep my Moxie and my Insurance for my next go round. So uh, that's the perfect meal. If I ever see that, I just kind of cry and say yay and dance little silly little songs, uh, dances of joy and such. Uh, but uh, that's about all I want to say about the food. Um, let's go on to the next subject. All right, uh, we are going to need a very good item setup for this battle. Um, just like every other aspect of this fight, you're going to have to be on point with everything, including your item setups. Um, some of these items will be negotiable, but most of them are mandatory. And here we go. Uh, of course, your armor charm, power charm, uh, power talent, talent, and armor talent. This gives you all your instant buffs for having those in your inventory. Uh, two of these are ten each. Two of these are five each. Attack and defense, attack and defense. Uh, Kelby Horn, I generally have 10, but I'm just running low at the moment. Uh, so you're going to have 10 Kelby Horn, 10 Immunizers. Those are crafting materials for Ancient Potions. So now instead of one Ancient Potion, you have 11 uh, for now. Okay, uh, I have the two Mega Bombs in case, me Mega Barrel Bombs in case I want to do, you know, the bomb trick in the beginning. Uh, this is negotiable if you don't want to keep it. Actually, I, I should take it out and put something else. I just don't really need anything else. Maybe one of those quick and sharpen things. Um, uh, I forgot what they call it, but the disposable sharpeners. Maybe put something like that in there if you don't want the bombs. Uh, Mega Nutrients and Magdara are required for max potions. So that's how you craft those. So that's an, an, an additional five to the two you have. So you, now you have seven max potions and you have 11 ancient potions, 18 so far. And now you have 22 because Gloam Grass, Bud, and God Bud, uh, Bud, Bug, uh, creates ancient potions. So that's four more of those. So you have 22 combinations of max potions and ancient potions that are craftable and usable during the fight and this is very important uh, because both of these work almost instantly whereas mega potion takes some time and this will save your ass several times compared to mega potions you just use these guys uh, use your dust of life dust of life because it also works very quickly and so you use this when you have you know let's say two-thirds of your health you still have and you just want to top up to proc uh, peak performance you're going to use your dust of life uh, that's generally what I have set to my square and I have everything else on radial menus uh, like I said mega potions come in a pinch in case I run out of everything else and I might need an emergency heal but I hardly ever if I can't remember the last time I used it uh, that is negotiable uh, mega demon drug and mega armor skin of course for your uh, perks uh, you can have a backup set up where you not have those two and two other items if you might want something else uh, like the things that sharpen or something like that heart shell powder demon powder adamant seed might seeds there are many opportunities to buff in this fight so you're gonna be using these uh, always have them Farcaster always have to get out of in a pinch and I generally in every fight I'm forecasting once or twice just because I like to restock up on my items and my buffs and things like that. I'm not a perfect fighter of Fatalis, but I'm good enough. Uh, I can beat him without carding, but I generally cart once or twice. Um, well, once usually. Usually once I get that first buff to attack and defense, uh, I don't cart again. Uh, but sometimes I do. Uh, in the video I'm going to show you, I do cart twice because I do want to show you the... Um, uh, max attack and defense you get from having fortified proc twice uh, so and that's the other point of these instant things it's to keep your health uh, proc'd at a hundred percent so sorry not proc but so you can proc peak performance smoke bombs of course you're going to use these for your guns or cannons uh, that kind of stuff so you always want to make sure you have those uh, it's a nice items to replace this in a backup set uh, once the fight begins the items to craft the smoke bombs so uh, that's something you can do with that too but these uh, items are going to come in handy uh, the energy drink as well it's nice to be able to buff up with that at certain points so you don't have to worry about uh, running out of energy and you can run and try to bait cones especially in the beginning of the fight that's a good idea to take some uh, because fatalis is standing and you can start baiting some cones and, and if you're farming the fatalis eye it's a really good strategy okay uh, i think that's all about the items that i want to discuss for right now uh, let's go on to the next subject 
Just a quick correction, um, feline safe card does work the same as feline insurance. Uh, sometimes I'm wrong about these things, guys. Um, usually some of the more minor details. Sometimes I just get a little confused. But yes, if you have a feline safe card and uh, a party member carts, it is still going to uh, deduct that as a penalty for, for carting. So that's that's good to know. Uh, I've been, you know, I was wrong about a bunch of stuff. I used to think forever that if you had auto sheath on, or you had to have auto sheath on, so um, if you ever started running, you would put away your your weapon. But I found out you did not specifically need to have that setting on. Um, you just have to start running, and you'll always just sheath your weapon. So good stuff to know. Um, also, just be aware that uh, this fight is going to require some some grinding of specifically just fighting fatalis to get used to him, to get used to his moves. Uh, I think I'm going to wrap up this video here. And um, the next video is going to have uh, just a bunch of tips for phase one, two, and three, what to look out for, what you can do, how you can punish, things like that. Uh, and then is going to go through a complete run. So you can uh, see that from beginning to end that I'll narrate um, through the process. And uh, I think it's a good stopping point. This first video is a lot of education, a lot of information. And the next video is going to be all of it uh, in action, putting all these skills and this knowledge of this fight together and uh, and making this happen and, and defeating this monster and feeling that joy of uh, success. Yay! Um, so don't feel too discouraged. Just always have a plan of what you need to do to beat him. Um, you know, like for example, uh, make sure you get your punishes on his breath attacks. They're all very, very punishable, uh, but you just have to be positioned correctly to be able to do that. And if you're in the wrong position, it's going to be a cart. If you're in the right position, it's going to be heavy damage that you're performing on them, you know? Um, so there's going to be all that information coming up on the next episode. But have a plan. Know what you're trying to do. <clears throat> and even if it's not always successful, so you say you miss an opportunity to charge a weapon or get a helm splitter, that's okay. Just keep trying to do the actions of your plan as a reactionary thing to what Fatalis is doing, and you will eventually get there. You'll put it all together and get there. Um, there's a couple more minutes left of this clip, and I might just let it run because uh, this was just a nice little sequence of events. Um, but this is pretty much the end of the episode, so I'm going to quit the voice over. I just wanted to add, uh, if you guys are enjoying this video so far uh, please leave a like uh, subscribe and all that good stuff and also if you could if you know anybody that would be interested in seeing this information show it to them you know form your parties with your friends and your teams show everybody this video so everybody knows all these details about fatalis let's get in some groups of four and start whomping him real good and having some fun let's let's do this why don't you join my squad it's called no faints um my uh my PlayStation Network ID is in the, um, not the comments, well, I'll put it in the comments, but it's in the description. Uh, send out a message, I will, next time I see you online, I'll uh, uh, give you a shout out, and jump into my session, and I can add you to the squad. I'm going to start streaming a lot of stuff from uh, the squad hubs. I'm going to start streaming um, my uh, goal of getting to... Um, Master Rank 999. In fact, this was the whole purpose of what I was just speaking of. If you rewind it a little bit, you'll see that I was trying to accomplish some big things, but I kept just falling short. But I kept at it, and I eventually got the head break, and now I can do some massive damage and all that good stuff. Uh, by the way, when you do get a head break, you want to stay on the top portion of his head. There's another tip for you. But I'm going to do some streaming uh, with some Monster Hunter group members. Uh, let's go do some fun stuff. Let's hunt Fatalis. Uh, watch this video. Get some groups together and let's see how fast we can beat him or uh, let's have a dedicated cannon guy and the other three we'll just see if we can just stomp him as much as possible in the first couple of phases and phase three is barely a thing you know you can do a lot of cool stuff if you know what you're doing and I know uh, there's a lot of videos out recently that show like the palico trick or you know the uh, team dark sides uh, guides to showing how you can use the gun lance to do some huge tick damage or other long sword users or whatever Ever, weapon users, greatsword users, uh, insect glaive users, wink wink. Um, you know, I, I get all this stuff and there's easy ways to, to beat him beat him than this, but this is meant to be a way that anybody that plays this game can start working on a build and whatever your playstyle is, is have the information that you need to be able to beat Fatalis. Alright, thanks for now and have a great one. See ya.